Yo, what's going on guys? Banglin here coming back at you with another video and today we are doing Ooh, was that English? We're doing another rebuild. It's the San Francisco 49ers and remember these are fantasy style rebuilds which means uh, that these are not meant to be the most realistic. We have another series on this channel for realistic rebuilds. Check that out if you're interested. And also, I never ask for likes, and people say, yo, you gotta ask for likes, uh, help your video grow. So if, if you wanna like the video right now, if you like it, or you know, wait for a point in the video till you're like, eh, it's decent, um, I guess that would be helpful. And anyway, we got the San Francisco 49ers. I wanna preface this off by saying, this is obviously not my San Francisco 49ers franchise that I'm doing on this channel. I have not yet had a chance to start that because I'm working out um, both sliders and I want the actual rosters to drop first before we play a game. So week one rosters, for sure, the series will start. So I know a lot of you people have been waiting very patiently for that and I thank you for it. You're excited. I am too. I really want to get into it. Um, but we have to wait just a little bit longer. So top three players for this 49ers team in this rebuild, we have uh, Kyle Juziakuski, we have Navarro Brownman, and we have Pierre Garkin. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> no, you come here, you're gonna hear me say the names correctly. Kyle Juszczyk, Navarro Bowman, and Pierre Garcon. Some people, they just don't know, man. They don't know. You're not gonna hear me mispronounce too many names. Like, probably one out of every couple of hundred, not even gonna lie kind of a big deal with pronouncing names. Appreciate it. All right, so for the actual team breakdown, we have a couple of familiar faces. Marquise Goodwin, my boy out of Texas. Hook him horns. Jeremy Curley, who is now not on the 49ers. So we actually, uh, we're going to cut him straight away, which kind of sucks, but goodbye, Jeremy Curley. It was happening in real life. Um, I use the most updated rosters, but they don't have everything, obviously. We also got uh, Aldrich Robinson, George Kittle, Logan Paulson, is this Garrett Selleck? Is that Garrett? Yeah, sweet. Uh, offensive line is not good. Like, I think I'm probably going to trade Joe Staley just because he's 33 years old and he still has value. He's one of the best players, I think, to ever play on the 49ers, and people aren't going to remember that. But Joe Staley has been phenomenal for so long. Great offensive lineman. The rest here, we might start uh, Joshua Garnett, former first-round draft pick, actually. At quarterback, I'm going to go C.J. Beathard instead of Brian Hoyer. I guess we're going to keep Carlos Hyde. Probably try to trade both of them, though, to be honest. I kind of want an upgrade there. On the defense side of the ball, uh, Eric Reed needs to go. Got my boy Jaquiski Tart. Dude, he was nice in college. Hit so hard. Went to a small-time school, though. Uh, of course, at Stanford, as did his teammate James Bradbury. With the uh, linebacking core, we have Navarro Bowman. We have the beast out of Alabama, hard hitting, fast, can cover. Reuben Foster, you got Ray Ray Armstrong, what a what a guy. Reuben Foster, man, I predicted this so well in my uh, in my prospect video. I'm gonna pat myself on the back. Fuck it, I, actually, you know, I'm gonna do it as well, cause I'm a dick. Reuben Foster, knew he's gonna be sick. Had a fantastic preseason. I only expect him to elevate his game even more. Defensive line is interesting. We have Richard Robinson, who I wanted the Giants to go after because I knew he was, he was going to uh, drop in the draft. And he's actually been pretty good. I know he's only a 77 overall. I think he was very good last year, especially for a young player. Uh, Elvis Dumerville needs to go too old. Aaron Lynch, I thought, would be a higher overall on this. We also have DeForest Buckner. Quinton Dial, of course, the first-round draft pick in Solomon Thomas. Tank Carradine. Ronald Blair at Appalachian State. Why do I know any of these things? I don't know, dude. I just do. Eric Armstead down here. Another first round draft pick. I don't know what I want to do with this team. It's just so weird. I need to trade like all these defensive linemen. Uh, I don't know about Aaron Lynch. I guess he doesn't really fit the system. I, or he could start at right end off the bat. I don't know. But let's just start making some moves and see what happens. Okay, big first trade happening. We got Pierre Garçon, Joe Staley, and a third round pick for Joey Bosa. And now this doesn't necessarily look like it makes a lot of sense off the bat but you got to look at the that right side i'm not going to play eric armstead uh or deforest buckter at right end really i kind of like them more on the inside and he, i guess i probably don't want to work with eric armstead to be real uh so joey bose is going to come in play right end probably maybe even left i don't know uh and he's going to be hopefully great for us pierre garçon just too old same thing with joe staley and i feel like this is a tremendous trade for us and i may not be done uh, with the Chargers, if I can get maybe a guy like Jason Verrett or Keenan Allen, someone like that. 
All right, so this is going to be probably a controversial trade. We are getting rid of longtime 49er Navarro Bowman, another fantastic 49er, one of the best ever, top 20 49er for sure, easily, if not top 15. Probably wouldn't go too much higher than that. We are trading Navarro Bowman. He's just 29, and you could you know make the argument, even though it wouldn't matter in this, coming off injury. I would prefer the 25-year-old phenom, Keenan Allen, another... <laughs> <laughs> talking about injury, Keenan Allen. Uh, Keenan Allen's 25, incredibly good. Injuries are turned off for this. Um, and we're giving away Tank Carradine as well as a lo- uh, with a second round pick next year. I think Keenan Allen's just way too valuable. And uh, when I saw I could do this trade, I just had to jump on it. Okay. <laughs> Elvis Dumerville, Eric Reed, and Tim Hightower for Zeke. I don't know how we just got Ezekiel Elliott. And, I mean, I wanted a new running back, but I didn't think we'd be able to get Ezekiel Elliott. Now I can just, I could probably scumbag and trade Carlos Hyde right back to the Cowboys for something sick. Um, like, an offensive line? I might have to. <laughs> Another big one. <laughs> Carlos Hyde, Malcolm Smith, and a third-round pick for Landon Collins, one of the best young players in the NFL. Um, if not one of the best safeties in the NFL, and you could probably say that he is. Also, the way I'm wearing my headphones is ridiculous right now, but, uh, like, headphones are dumb. I'm, I'm gonna say it. I prefer earbuds. It's just, you know, they hurt your ears after prolonged use. It's fucking annoying. Just, like, don't hurt. But I think that's gonna be the team for season number one. Uh, I forgot to make some changes. CJ Beathard is going to be my number one. I thought about trading Kyle Juice check, but I just decided not to. Wasn't up for it. Wasn't feeling it. Use check. I said juice. Whatever. Juice is nickname. Moved Ruben Foster to middle linebacker. We're going to play Eli Harold. Former Virginia Tech. Virginia. That's... Ooh. That's beat. Can't believe I just made that mistake. Eric Armstead is going to play defensive tackle. Mmm. He's terrible. Uh, and he doesn't have good development. Yeah. we're Eric Armstead is just going to ride the pine. And, um... I feel like the rest we're not going to change for right now. We're just going to see what happens. And I uh, will see you guys at the midseason mark. We're going to simulate straight there. All right, so it's been it's been a rough eight weeks for the San Francisco 49ers team. Um, it's been a rough couple of several weeks there. One and seven. At least the records look somewhat real, though. Usually you'll see simulation terrible, but it's like... This doesn't look that bad to me. I mean, maybe the Cardinals have won too many wins, but that's just nitpicking. I feel like the Cardinals are, are pretty good, actually. Like, 5-2 and two doesn't seem insane to me. 2-4, and four, and I guess 2-4-1 and one for the Rams seems okay, and then 1-7 and seven for the Niners seems about accurate. So if they did something in the patch today, change that, good on them. Ton of XP for Ruben Foster and Solomon Thomas. Love to see it. And, um, yeah, uh, have some scouting to do. Have some players to negotiate contracts with. It's Aaron Lynch. And where is he? There he is. Do we bring back Aaron Lynch? 24 years of age. The thing is, as much as I like Aaron Lynch, he doesn't really have a spot on this team. He's got speed going for him. He's got the athleticism. But 68 block shed. Power move isn't great. I just don't see him making a huge impact on this team. Uh, and for that reason, I'm going to let him go along with the rest of these players. And we'll look to address offensive line probably in free agency. I think this draft class is somewhat loaded, except at the quarterback position. From I've seen a little bit so far. So, we'll see. Glenn Coffey? I don't know if you guys remember Glenn Coffey. Probably not. He was actually a second-round pick by the 49ers, if I recall. Um... He went and joined the military, though. Glenn Coffey, what a guy. Oh, let me look into this. They, he spells it with one less N for Glenn Coffey. But uh, he was a running back, third-round pick. Uh, back in 2009, played one year. And then he joined the military, if I recall. Yeah, man. What a guy. All right, so obviously we did not make the playoffs. Finished... 4 and 12. So we're going to be looking at a very, very high pick. Let's see exactly how each record and uh, each stat line came to fruition. CJ Beathard, 
This is a poor season, obviously. Not even 3,000 yards, 18 touchdowns to 20 interceptions. He would be a project. We knew this. Ezekiel Elliott, 1,400 yards, 6 touchdowns. Fumbled the ball twice, receiving. Aldrick Robinson led our team in catches, yards. Not touchdowns, though. Keenan Allen came in and had 8. He had a good season for having C.J. Beathard at quarterback. Um, that's a lot of sacks allowed as well. Defensively, Reuben Foster, fantastic season. 156 tackles, led the team. Tackles for loss would be 16 from Joey Bosa, 10 from Solomon Thomas. Quarterback sacks was 7.5 from Eli Harold, 6 for Ray Ray Armstrong, 5.5 for Joey Bosa, 5 for DeForest Buckner, only 4 for Solomon Thomas. Three picks for both Lennon Collins and Reuben Foster. The Alabama boys, forced fumbles, 3 for Eli Harold. Two fumble recoveries for Eli Harold, that letter team. Any defensive touchdowns? No. How about awards? I saw Aaron Rodgers won MVP. There he is. Tom Brady in second. What are the odds that there are some 49ers on this list? Pretty low. I would maybe say defensive player of the year up there for Reuben Foster, though. He is nowhere to be found. The rookie Jared Davis won defensive player of the year, which means he will win defensive rookie of the year. C.J. Beathard, number four. For off his rookie of the year voting and Joe Williams number 10 defensive rookie of the year goes to Jared Davis Ruben Foster at number 2 Solomon Thomas at number 6 Akella Witherspoon at number 9 that is uh, unfortunate that we won no awards let's go ahead and simulate to the offseason and really get this rebuild underway I'm going to get Sheldon Richardson man I mean he's an 84 overall outside linebacker we run a 4-3 I can put Sheldon Richardson in slide him at defensive tackle it's the ideal fit and I'm going to give Sheldon Richardson as much money as I need to. Let's go ahead and do that in order to get him on the team. I feel like this would be a very, very good signing. Got to keep the salary where it is, if you know what I mean. I'm a child. All right, so we got Sheldon Richardson. That is a pretty big addition to the team, but you can see some major, major holes. I'll see if I can plug those off cam. Just get some uh, some players to fill in those those spots. But Sheldon Richardson, we're going to move him to defensive tackle. And you guys are going to see his overall climb probably around an 88 overall. I guess 87, 88. That's where I would hope anyway. I would expect in that range. Oh, 90 overall for Sheldon Richardson. Absolutely love it. That is awesome. But yeah, let's go ahead and fill some of these holes. And then I'll upgrade the team. Catch up to you guys uh, for season number four. What? Yo, I'm dumb as fuck right now. Season 4, we just fucking started. Where did I get a 4 from? I don't know, it's 4.15 in the morning. Anyway, out of season number 2, but we got the draft first. I'm just going to simulate straight there. So we have the number 4 overall pick. We also have two second round picks. I'd like two first round picks. And I'm going to make moves, I think, in order to make that happen. The first one is getting away from this pick. Number 4. Maybe trading down with, I guess the Bills is probably probably a good option. All right, so this trade's going to get it done. The number four overall pick and two sevens this year um, for the number five overall pick and a second round pick, both in this draft. And I am still going to be looking to move down from the number five pick. The two guys I want most are in like the twenty to 32 range so i'd like to probably get uh the browns number 21 uh, maybe i'll play it safe i'll go vikings 19 and like titans 20 so that's on the table next for me if i can somehow get that that'd be fantastic all right so this trade is a one of course my number five overall pick a four and a five next year for the vikings number 19 overall pick and a second round pick so i've got a bunch of second round picks and I've got that number 19 selection. If they take who I want, if anyone takes who I want um, before 19, I'm gonna be furious. I really will be. Well, it's gonna be more of a dejection, but uh, I'm used to uh, I'm used to that. Mm. Everything looks to be in order. Let's go ahead and take our first player. Gonna be Eric Rieger out of Georgia. Top three skills are good. That's what I look for the most. B plus release, B route running, B spec catch. Those are very good. And then his combine, of course, blows you away. Can he jump? No. Like, not at all. Is he strong? Not even a little bit. I know something about that. But is he fast? Fucking, yeah, he is. 4-2-6 speed. Agile as hell. Look at the 3-cone. Look at the 20-yard shuttle. Showcasing speed, agility, acceleration. 
and he's got good top three skills. Eric Rieger is going to be phenomenal in the slot. That's where I hope to play him. Eric Rieger's a phenomenal talent. 83 overall, number four in the draft. We took him at 19. 97 speed, 84 route running, 80 catching, 96 acceleration, 80 catching traffic, 84 spec catch, 82 jumping, which it seems even a bit high, but shout out to him. 73 awareness coming out of the draft seems quite high. Release is high. Dude, he's insane. Put him at running back even. like 79 carrying, you can do a lot of things with Eric Rieger, but I think you're going to want to play him at a wide receiver, and we're going to do just that. I got my eye on a corner up next. So with this trade, I'm actually getting extremely good value. I try to get a bunch of second round picks in order to trade back up to the first. But then I'm like, we still have Quinton Dial on the roster. He could be valuable to some team. And it turns out that team is sent for, that's me. Team is the Denver Broncos. So we're trading Quinton Dial a fifth and a sixth next year. The fifth is this year. For the number 26 overall pick from the Broncos. And I think I should be able to take my player. Uh, no problem. I was not correct. He went at number 24 to the fucking Steelers. He wasn't supposed to go to the second round. Unreal. I'll settle for uh, Marvin Atkinson, I think. And uh, yeah, I might even just take him a bit later. You know what? There's time. He's not like my number one. I'm going to get a first round pick next year with this pick. It works. It's fine. We're going to do this uh, trade with the Bears for their number six overall projected next year. And with my... Uh, my fourth overall pick in the second round, I'm going to be trading that down for the next year's first from the Saints. If they don't have Drew Brees, which I don't think they do anymore, that pick could be extremely valuable. I think I'm going to take Marvin Atkinson with this pick. He's got good top three skills. It's kind of what I look for. You'd like him to be a bit higher, but this is second round. Like That's almost perfect. He's got great speed at 4-4-2. He can jump. He's agile. He's got good size. Honestly, Marvin Atkinson looks like a really good player. And he is. 81 overall, ranked number 10 in the draft. We take him at 37. So two very solid picks so far. Play rec is low. I kind of like to see that. Uh, and awareness is low because we can just upgrade that. He's already a really good player. I am very satisfied with the way this draft has gone so far for the most part. With this pick, I'm going to take Curry Houston out of Louisville. He's a speed type, which doesn't make sense because he's not fast. Good top three skills, though. I like to see it. Uh, he's going to be a 78 overall, ranked number 33. We took him at 51. All good picks so far. I'm really excited uh, with the way that we've drafted. I usually draft really well, though, so I guess it's not a super big surprise. But um, I think I might go back-to-back -back wide receivers. I think I might go with this pick all the way down the board for Ray Sherrillis out of Stanford. Good top three skills. Pretty abysmal combine, but... I think it's going to be good depth at the number four overall receiver position. And this is our first, you could say, bad pick. Slow development is trash. He's ranked number 87 in the draft. We took him at 54. I like his attributes. I do, for the most part. But, I mean, shouldn't have drafted him. And I took a risk doing so. But you got to take them sometimes. We're in round six. Bradley Meadows is on my draft board. 3-4 pass rusher. I like his top three skills. I think he's tremendous value in the sixth round. We're going to draft him. He is a 70 overall. It's a good value pick. He's not insane, but you can't really play for anyone who's insane at this point. Just good value. He had 85 power move, though, I think, which is great. This is the cornerback I wanted to take for Sean Carr out of Texas A&M. I think he's good. I think our player is also pretty good, so I'm not really too mad about this at all. Glenn Coffey uh, was not good. 66 overall. The real Glenn Coffey. He was something. Not so much as a player, but as a person. What a guy. All right, so obviously I have not prioritized the offensive line uh, position group yet. I think we, in this past draft, obviously, we addressed a lot of these skill positions, and I think we did very, very well in bringing guys like Curry Houston and Eric Rieger. Uh, and I think we're building around our potential quarterback. C.J. Beathard is not the guy. Just not in this particular rebuild. It's not going to happen. Maybe about my actual four down his franchise series he could be but not here defense looking sharp I would say overall uh, it's just I guess the linebacker they need work they do but I think I'm going to go out and try to trade for some linemen before the uh, season starts hopefully we can get some good ones I have the picks I should have used some of those second round picks like when I took a guy like Sherlis, I should have just said hey 
I want linemen instead, and I didn't do that, which was a mistake. But uh, we're going to learn from that. We're going to get better. We're going to better this team. Nick Mangold, who I signed, and Tom Compton, they're not going to get the job done. This entire offensive line needs a revamp. Can't happen overnight. Well, I guess it's going to happen overnight in real life. Literally, it's 4.30 in the morning. But uh, let's go out. Let's get some new players. With this trade, I am moving on from Ray Ray Armstrong, as well as a seventh rounder this year and a sixth rounder next year. We're bringing in Western Richburg to be our new starting center. Love that addition to the team. Obviously, I'm a Giants fan. Western Richburg is usually pretty solid. Uh, and now I need to land maybe a left tackle, maybe a guard, maybe a right tackle, maybe another guard. Pretty much the entire offensive line we can improve on. All right, we've traded for another center. Cody Whitehair will not be playing center for me. He's going to slide over to guard. And uh, Eric Armstead in a seventh rounder next year gets it done. We've improved the offensive line very much with two players who are not impact players on this team. And uh, I'm very, very satisfied with these moves so far. I think we're going to hold on to Trent Brown and start him at right tackle for this season. But I need to probably go trade for right tackle to move over to left. Because right tackle is just easily uh, traded for comparatively to left tackles. So uh, I think the team's coming together, though, especially with these new offensive line additions. With this trade, I'm trading a second and a third round of next year for Lael Collins from the Dallas Cowboys. I think we're going to play him at left tackle. I mean, he's been moving all over the line in his career. I mean, he played tackle and guard at LSU. Um, played guard and now tackle in Dallas. I think the move to left tackle uh, from right now won't be too hard for him in-game, especially. So Tom Compton and um, Slade, I forgot your Trent Brown. They're the guys for right now. I'm going to upgrade this team. We've got some XP to work with and um, simulate to the midseason mark. I'll show you guys the updated team in a minute. So this is the upgraded team, by the way. Nothing that notable other than Ezekiel Elliott up to a 97 overall. And on the defensive side of the ball, we have Richard Robinson only up to a 79. Although Solomon Thomas up to an 88, Ruben Foster at an 81. Nothing to, is this Lorenzo Jerome? It is. What are you doing on this team? All right, you can stay. We'll allow it. Uh, if Ronald Blair's on the team, you can. You can be. So I think the team's improved a lot. I don't know if that's going to translate to more wins. I kind of doubt it because, uh, I mean, we just have no quarterback and the team really isn't that good. But I think we're moving in the right direction. And I guess I'll see you guys at the midseason mark. So, of course, one win again at the midseason mark. Not ideal. It's just not possible at this point, I think, with C.J. Beathard. And it's unfortunate, but it's the way it is. Can't really do anything about him being <laughs> really bad overall to start out. But, uh, I mean... I've got my eye on season three already. I'm excited for it. What's his XP on defense looking like? Uh, not too bad. It's not really that telling right now. It's hard to say. But uh, I'm gonna do some scouting. I guess we gotta bring back Landon Collins. That's a pretty big, pretty big guy to bring back. Anybody else? Jimmy Ward. Jimmy Ward's a question mark for me. I do. Some of these players are very, very brink players. I would say they're on the edge. Didn't realize Trent Brown was 355. It's pretty massive. Going to bring back Landon Collins, definitely. Going to decide the fate of the other players at a later time. Landon Collins signs back. We have $102 million in cap space. We should be able to land some pretty good players in free agency for that. And I will go all out. I will. So now it's really decision time. Literally says big decision on there. Jimmy Ward, Trent Brown, others... Tom Compton is not a big decision at all. He's gone. <sighs> Did we bring back Jimmy Ward, though? I, 28, 80 overall. Eli Harrell. I, I'm going to say... I'm going to say no to every single one of them. It's tough, but... Got to move in the right direction. Can't dwell. Jimmy Ward just didn't pan out on us. I'm sure in other franchises he may have, but just didn't get the stats. Didn't get didn't do enough for us so time to move on to bigger and better things set up free agency okay okay yes
So, as a Giants fan, I'd be pissed. As an impartial 49ers coach right now, in a rebuild totally not related to the Giants, I am psyched Odell Beckham Jr. is here, and I am taking him 100%. Ryan Shazier, same deal. We need linebackers, badly. Shazier is the perfect one. I need linemen, kind of. Rishi Incognito is going to play right guard. Um, there's there's not really a good tackle here, in my opinion. But I, t I told you guys who I want. AJ Can, actually, could play tackle. AJ Can could also play guard. Uh, I'm just going to see what I can do. I mean, I have 85.4 million in cap room. Should be able to get a couple of big names in here. Or, I guess, two. So we signed Ryan Shazier, we signed Odell Beckham Jr., and we signed Richie Incognito. Richie Incognito is going to play right guard. John Theus cannot be my starting right tackle. That is an absolute no-go. Can't happen. Won't happen. Not going not gonna to happen. I can't stress that enough. Um, so I need to find a replacement. I don't know why the confidence is so low. Maybe it's because we fucking blow and lose every game. That could be why. But I think the team is headed in the right direction. Um, fucking Robin Foster, you're back to outside linebacker. We have some XP. I'm excited. We're headed into the draft. We, we're going to have some good good things happen. Good things will happen. Season 3? Oh, it's going to be killer. It's going to be killer. 47k for Meadows? Interesting. So here in the draft, we have the number three overall pick, which I don't plan on taking. I'm going to trade back. Hopefully, pick number, let's just do number six. Uh, I don't want to trade with a division rival. We're probably going to move down to either four or seven. Most likely seven. We're going to trade down just one spot with the Dolphins, pick up a third rounder, and uh, I think hopefully leverage that into, like, I don't know, the ninth pick. I'm at 13 right now, and I just don't want to take any chances, so if I could trade back up into the top 10, that would be ideal. All right, end up moving one spot ahead of the Jets because they also need a quarterback, and surprise, I plan on taking a quarterback at number 8. I know we haven't even taken our number 4 overall pick yet, but it's going to be the 13th overall pick, a 3rd, and a 4th for that number 8 overall spot. The 4th is next year, but uh, I am super, super excited about I guess both of these players, but one more so than the other. The first one, it's like getting it out of the way. <laughs> and it's Dre Pope out of LSU. It's looking like it's kind of been the um, defensive back university DBU of recent years. And hopefully Dre Pope is just another one of those really good players that we take. Decent combine. I like the top three skills. We don't really know too much about his zone. Hopefully it is decently high. And he is going to be an 80 overall. Uh, looks like a bit of a reach. I'm extremely comfortable with this pick. You're looking at a safety with high speed, high hit power. Zone coverage can be boosted, obviously. 80 overall at number four. I'm perfectly fine with that. That's where Jimmy Ward was, uh, except Dre Pope is not 28. At number eight, I'm going down the board, taking my quarterback of the future, Dextrell Hunter. Love his top three skills. You wish you could see a bit higher throw accuracy mid, but this is pretty much ideal. I think he has the build. I think his combine was still pretty good. Not that that matters so much to me, but Dextrell Hunter, 80 overall, quick development. Love it. Ranked number 12. We drafted him at 8. Another 80 overall, but that development is nice. And um, just overall, a really, really good looking player with his medium accuracy at 85, short at 86. The deep is a 79. Like, he's fantastic. 80 speed. So well rounded. Um, he's got some great traits coming out for the most part. I'm in on Dextral Hunter. Super, super happy with that pick. And now I'm going to be taking Reggie Sharp out of Texas. Hook him horns. 6'2". Good top three skills. I'm in on him. Reggie Sharp. 80 overall with quick development. Are we just going to draft straight 80s this entire draft? 6'2", 89 speed, 85 man, 86 zone, 84 press. Extremely well-rounded. Quick development. Hook him horns. Reggie Sharp. Is the newest member of the San Francisco 49ers. Here I'm going to be taking a Ray DeGear. I think he looks like a really good fullback. And I plan on probably playing him at running back number two or moving Kyle Juszczyk to play running back number two. I needed more of a goal line back. 
and uh, I think Ray DeGear could either be that or most likely move Kyle Juszczyk to play that position. So Ray DeGear, 85 overall, ranked number two in the draft, and um, decent pick, I guess. He's not going to be extremely valuable. We took him at number 67. I know that. He's a fullback. But I needed a goal line back, and I think Kyle Juszczyk moving the halfback number two is going to be a really good move for us in the long run. So we have a bunch of XP to spend. I don't really know what this lineup is going to end up looking like once we spend all that XP, but I assume pretty different because I don't know who exactly is going to play where. There's still spots to be earned. John Theus is somehow still on this team. I have no idea how, but he's a fucking wily little ginger, isn't he? And by little, I mean he's 6'6", 303, so he's quite large, actually. But uh, I've got some XP to spend. Odell came with 44k. Awesome. So uh, let's spend some of this XP, boost up this team, and go out here and make the playoffs in year three. All right, guys, so this is the team for season number three that I've been hyping up a little bit. And um, offensive line is looking very much improved. How is John Thea still on this team? Anyway, um, I guess he is for now. Receiving core is, in my mind, excellent. Probably the best in the NFL between Odell down to Curry Houston. George Kittle is decent enough. Offensive line is good besides John Theus. I don't know how he's still there. Honestly, it looks a bit like Brian Scalabrini. Maybe he's the White Mamba incarnated in the NFL. Um, Landon Collins moved over to free safety. Of course, we have the man over here, rookie Dre Pope out of LSU, playing strong safety. My man, Bradley Meadows, with his 47K XP. I don't know where he fucking got it from, but he just had it. He's an 84 overall now. Can we find out where he got that from? Yeah, he won Defensive Rookie of the Year. Did I not check? I totally didn't check. Um, well, I mean, now you know. That's how he got it. So, defensive line looking improved. I like the corners. I mean, like, this is, this is a team that has a lot of potential. We can build around a rookie quarterback and excel the way I think we can. This is not only a playoff team, but a team that can go deep into the playoffs. So I'm excited for the potential. A lot of weapons around our quarterback. See you guys at the midseason mark. We'll see what we're doing. See how we're how we're working it. All right, so we're three and four at the midseason mark, which is not great. Um, it's not great, but it's improvement. It's three times as many wins as we'd seen near this point before. We are in the playoff race, and that's the most important thing as we have narrowly beaten the Browns here in week eight. Um, XP situation, you can't really see anything too major. Dextro Hunter, please, 10K is fantastic. You know, I'm gonna use this XP right now. We're gonna make this playoff push. We also gotta re-sign Zeke. I'm sure others, I'm sure others who are very important. Uh, Joey Bosa, yes. Cody Whitehair, yes. Reggie Ingodnito, no. 36, gonna be 37, I'm out. Lel Collins, yes. DeForest Buckner, yes. Richard Robinson, yes. All right, so we re-signed Richard Robinson, DeForest Buckner, Lel Collins, Cody Whitehair, Ezekiel Elliott, Joey Bosa um, needs a higher salary. That's okay. They don't always say yes every time. And um, I still feel like we have a really good shot to make the playoffs. I don't even know what I'm going to do about scouting. John Theus, I've, fucking... I. I meant to get rid of him. Uh, we'll, we'll go to the playoffs. I need a different right tackle. I don't know how John Theus is still on this team. I really have no idea. Honestly, props. He's a little snake. We didn't make the playoffs. How close was it? Eight and eight. Finished in second. That's all right. That's, you know, eight times as many wins as we saw in season number two. Let's go ahead and check out the stats. See what's what. Good season for Dextro Hunter as a rookie. I know 19 picks is horrific, but 30 touchdowns, 4,200 yards. It's better than we saw out of C.J. Beathard, that's for sure. Zeke, great season. Kyle Juszczyk, eight touchdowns as a goal back. Receiving, Keenan Allen did pretty great. So did Odell, of course. 1,200 yards, seven touchdowns, nearly 1,200 yards. Seven touchdowns for George Kittle. I mean... We had a lot of guys who were involved. Offensive line performed admirably, aside from Lyle Collins. John Theus, nine sacks allowed as well. Tackles for loss would be 15 from Sheldon, 11 from somebody else. 
from Joey Bosa, who also had 15 sacks, 13 from Solomon Thomas. Also, Ryan Shazier led our team in tackles, interceptions, three from the rookie, Dre Pope. Hopefully, that's enough to uh, give him the defensive rookie of the year nod. No forced fumbles, though, for the big hitter. Two from Sheldon, two from Ruben Foster. How did we do? No defensive touchdowns. How about awards? MVP goes to Aaron Rodgers yet again. Don't see any 49ers. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Aaron Rodgers. Easy kid Elliott, number 10. Defense Player of the Year goes to Deion Jones. Any 49ers? No. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Dextrell Hunter. That is big. Uh, that's going to be a lot of XP. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Dre Pope misses out by one. No. Reggie Sharp at number five, the cornerback. We got robbed, dude. We got robbed. But uh, season four, we're definitely going to make the playoffs. Dextro Hunter is going to take that next step. He'll be better than a 79, 80 overall. So that is a good thing. The pieces are only improving around him. I like where this is going. Season four, I think, is going to be extremely successful. Extremely. Let's go ahead and advance to the offseason. See if we can bring in a quality right tackle and right guard. So I forgot that we got to bring Joey Bosa back. I need this. All right, so we've increased everything. Hopefully Joey says yes, and he does. I think it's the right move. I think this is actually going to be a very successful team here for year number four, and uh, I'm glad Joey has come to his senses, decided to re-sign. You know, Joey Bosa, a great player. He's not the type to hold out, right? Right? Wrong. Snake. Joe Tooney is here. Joe Tooney will work. Come to San Francisco, Joe. We got him. And Larmy Tunsil, perfect. This is actually so perfect. We have so much cap room still. All right, Larmy Tunsil and Joe Tooney both have signed. Larmy Tunsil is our new starting um, left tackle. Lyle Collins is going to move back over to the right. It's a better fit for him, I think, despite playing left tackle the past two years with this San Francisco 49er team. Larmy Tunsil is just going to he can play that. Cody Whitehair is going to move to right guard after playing uh, a bunch of left guard for us. Shouldn't be too hard of a change for the former Kansas State offensive lineman. And um, offensive line looking great. And uh, let's go ahead and use a bunch of this XP. I like. I don't even know what I'm going to do in the draft, to be honest. Uh, not a whole lot of areas where we can improve besides, I guess, cornerback is, is the one main one. What I've decided to do, actually, is try and take some of these picks and trade for a solid cornerback. That is next on the table. It is happening. C.J. Beathard and our first-round pick gets us A.J. Boye from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Super excited to add him to the team. I think that's maybe the first time I've ever traded for him in any rebuild I've ever done, whether it was Madden 15, 16, 17, and now 18. So... First time for everything still. We don't really have many other picks, so we're just going to go ahead and simulate the draft and move on to season number four, where hopefully we can dominate. I also noticed that Sean Lee and now Aqib Talib are both free agents. And for one-year deals, I'm fine with bringing both of those guys to San Francisco, uh, even though that means burying some other younger corners on the depth chart in uh, Sharp and in Richard Robinson. I think it's going to work out for the better. And uh, Sean Lee, I think, is just going to play middle linebacker for us, be our backup. All right, so I'm going to use a bunch of this XP because we have a ton of it. And um, this team is going to look so good. It's going to look so good. Like, let me, let, me, let me do a quick test. 90 overall, which is, I think, really high so far. I think we're going to be at least a 91, 92, maybe even a 93 by the time we finish uh, upgrading all these players. All right, so I know I just signed Aqib Tlaib. I'm not going to keep him on the team. Um, it's just I feel like it's kind of cheesy, even more cheesy than what usually happens in these fantasy rebuilds. I just want to play with the uh, the corners that we've drafted, and Atkinson and Sharp and, of course, Sharp Robinson, who's already on the team. I'd like them to play over a guy that we just go in and just click two buttons, A, twice in free agency, so I guess one button twice, uh, and get on the team. But this is the full team. I think it looks insane. Uh, notable changes. We have uh, Sharp up to an 84, Atkinson up to an 84. We have Shazer up to a 93, Ruben Foster up to an 88, 
Dre Pope up to an 82. Uh, on the offense side of the ball, George Kittle is an 83. A um, bunch of players are up significantly, especially our man here, Dextrel Hunter, up to an 86. And Digir up to a 90. We're killing the game. This, this is the team. See you at the midseason mark for utter domination. Five wins. Five and two. That's domination for a rebuild, man. Simulation always out to get me. Damn, we got another game in. Six and two. Kinda on the ball, kinda not. Um, we're killing the game. I'm telling you. Top of the division. Six and two. We got some coach XP. I'm gonna get even more uh, of an XP bonus going with player progression. Let's do it with the uh, defensive backfield. And I'm in. I'm upgrading players. I will see you guys for the playoffs. Resigning Solomon Thomas? Fuck it, not now. We're winning Super Bowls first. Also, it is notable, uh, I didn't think this was possible, and I'm assuming it's because of him winning Offensive Rookie of the Year, but Dextral Hunter now has superstar development. I tried to go into progression history and see if it would actually show it, and um, I guess since it might have happened last season, I can't actually do that. Um, but sure enough, he does have superstar development now, and obviously, you guys know me. I, there's no reason for me to change it uh, manually. But um, I'm sure pleased about it. Rieger, I thought he had better than normal development, come to think of it, but he didn't. So, but we're upgrading Dextral Hunter 89 overall. Let me do the rest of them and just catch you guys up. Also, before we get there, look at how unfair Odell is. So you're pretty much 99s across the board in anything you care about. Route running, catching, catch traffic, spectacular catch. And then his speed, 94 is kind of good. Not sure if you guys knew that. 82K? What did you do, Dextrail? Yo. 12 and 4. That's what, that's what I'm talking about, man. Let's check out the stats. I'm actually super pumped. Dextrail Hunter went off. Did he throw an interception per game? Look at the gunslinger, Brett Favre. That's what Dextrail Hunter is. Um... Granted, Brett Favre, not a Tennessee guy, but 4,900 yards for Dextrail Hunter. Um, 45 touchdowns. He did have 16 picks, though, which sucks. Zeke, 1,300 yards, 18 touchdowns. Receiving. Oh, look at Odell, please. 1,400 yards on 102 catches, 11 touchdowns. Keenan Allen, almost 1,000 yards, 8 yards shy. Unfortunately, 14 touchdowns. George Kittle, 820 yards. Eric Rieger from the slot, over 1,000 yards, and 10 touchdowns, three double-digit touchdown receivers, almost three, somewhat four 1,000-yard um, receivers. Only got two, though, unfortunately. Offensive line performed really, really well. Defensively, Ryan Chaser was the only one with 100-plus tackles. Tackles for loss, 13 from Joey Bosa. Quarterback sacks, 15 from Joey Bosa, nine from Solomon Thomas, eight from Sheldon. Wow, we didn't get a whole lot of sacks, did we? Interceptions, eight from A.J. Boye? Yo, what is your man in zone? 93-91? How do you get eight? Five from Landon Collins. Yo, this team, this team came to play. Force fumbles, three from Solomon Thomas. He also had three recoveries. Both led the team. I see one defensive touchdown. We got it. Landon Collins, man. Show me MVP. Dextra Hunter wins MVP. That is what I'm talking about. Where's Zeke? I don't know. NFC Offensive Player of the Year. Also, Dextrell Hunter. I mumbled that bad. Ezekiel Elliott at number seven. Defense Player of the Year. Deion Jones. No Niners. Oh, Chaser. Offense Rookie of the Year. Who cares? We didn't draft anyone, so it really doesn't matter. But we did get a first round bye, as I saw that we're not playing anyone. Who do we have? Show me the Seahawks. I'm cut their fucking throat. Here we go. So this is the upgraded team. Dextral Hunter is fucking disgusting. He's a 97 overall. He's insane. The whole team really is just absolutely filthy. So I expect large things. I want to bend over the Seattle Seahawks and perform insertion. Let's win the game. Here we go. Live from Levi's. Seattle. Is out to an early 3-0 lead. We answer right back with a field goal. This is a very exciting game so far. 9-3. Make it 10-9. Make it 17-9. Seattle, what, they don't know what's going on. 20. 27-9. Please. That's game. That's game. 27-9 is your final score. Pete Carroll, run the ball next time, you fucking idiot. 
No Super Bowl for you. We're headed to the conference championship. See you there. Ooh. The 14 and 2 Hot Atlanta Falcons at Mercedes Benz Stadium. Okay. 95 overall against 95 overall. All right. Okay, Falcons. Falcons. <laughs> All right, here we go. The NFC Championship game. I, this looks like natural light, which is odd because I'm pretty sure this is a dome. I, I guess it opens, or they have gigantic glass windows. Uh, we're out to an early 9-0 lead after a nice missed extra point. Please score. 16-3. Damn, simulation's been going my way so far. 19-6. 19-9 now. Don't do this, Atlanta. Don't do this, Atlanta. Usually you do end games. You don't come back. You screw up. 29-26. 29 all. Oh my goodness, please, please. No, it's overtime. I'm jumping in. I'm jumping in. Excuse me? Okay. I mean, I'll take the delay of game. I'll take it. I'm, I'm not complaining. Oh, and we have players. What a pleasant surprise. Okay, the bad news is I'm pretty sure this is, like, pro difficulty. I was like, can someone please get him? Oh, picked off by AJ Boye. So this is, like, going to be super easy to score. That's a great block. Watch this. Oh, what a spin move by AJ Boye. Okay. Field goal could win it. It's not going to happen that way. Great pick by AJ Boye. Now somebody has to make a play. Probably looking for Odell because he's really good. Rolling out with Dextrell. Okay, we're making plays. He's actually really fast. There's a spin move. If he would have fumbled, I would have impaled him with uh, sharp things. Can't think of anything sharp right now because I am ridiculously tired at 6 in the morning. As you could hear my voice thanking me for speaking for so long. Over the middle. It's Rieger. He's so fast. End zone. Touchdown. Let's go. That's the game. End it. End it here. We're going to the Super Bowl. We're going to the Super Bowl. Matt Ryan's a bitch. We have 99 overall offense and 99 overall defense. Just another day. It's what we do over here. Super Bowl. Show me. Show me the. I don't know. I'm feeling the Raiders. Show me the Raiders. Probably somebody dumb like the Chargers, though. I swear. Like, always the Chargers. It's the Patriots. I was going to say them at first, and I'm like, nah. But here they are. Super Bowl Dallas, who is their quarterback? That's the question. 95 overall against a 96 overall team. We're technically the home team. We're playing from a neutral site, though, I imagine. I can't remember where. Here we go, though. This is what we've done this entire thing for. 49ers, Patriots, the Super Bowl. George Kittle, best tight end in the NFL. Not Gronk. Not whoever else is good. Jordan Reed, Tyler Eifert. There are you get the point. It's George Kittle. Dextro Hunter is the best player ever. All right, Super Bowl fifty something. We are out to a early deficit, thirteen to three here, but we're gonna make it closer. Thirteen to nine going into the oh half's not even up yet. Oh, okay, I wish it was. Down twenty to nine. Got to get in the end zone, man. Twenty six to six or twenty seven sixteen. Thirty to sixteen. 30-23, 37-23, and that's it. That's tough. We're going to drop the Super Bowl here to New England Patriots, but we will be back. This is not the last you've seen of this team. When we revisit the rebuild, I'm sure that series will rear its ugly head around eventually, but that's going to be it for this particular video, guys. A video, guys. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. I think this was a very good episode. Maybe my favorite that I've done so far, but again, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.